Welcome back to the channel. In just a little bit, I'm going to teach you how to achieve a vintage looking color grade in your photos and designs using just a few adjustment layers. But before I do that, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. And while you're at it, go ahead and download all the free stuff I have available for you on my website by signing up to the mailing list. You will be emailed a link to all my freebies, such as my film glow actions, my Xerox actions, and so on. All right, now let's get started. So I'm showing you how to take your photo from something like this, which is a pretty good photo already, but we're gonna add a vintage color grade that makes it look like this. This is a really great effect for editorial photography or just to use in your design, say you're designing for an artist or you're just designing merch or whatever. This is a great effect to incorporate into your work. Before I get into this, keep in mind that this effect is going to vary depending on the image that you're using. So make sure you play around with all these settings and don't just copy exactly what I'm doing. And with that in mind, you'll be able to get a tasteful effect on any image that you're doing this on. Okay, so step number one, we want to inspect our image. We want to make sure there's no dirty JPEG artifacts in here or anything that resembles the image being low quality. This photo that I'm using right now is pretty fine. It's pretty high quality. It doesn't have many JPEG artifacts. Let's say if you're using a lower quality image like this example I have here where I zoom in and I see all these disgusting compression artifacts, what you're gonna wanna do is denoise your image. And lucky for you, I do have an action pack that does that. It is called the JPEG artifact decompressor that is available on my website if you wanna pick that up. Or you could also pick up the other tone action set that I have on my website as well, which has a similar denoising action. Either way, pick one of these up if your photo is filled with JPEG artifacts. I'll show you what that would look like here. So I'm gonna run this denoise action and we see that if we zoom in, we lose a lot of the noisy compression artifacts. And that is very useful when working with color. So if I say add a really strong levels adjustment on this denoise image, you can see that smooth gradient is fine between the colors. There's no problems there. But if I show you that on the original image that isn't denoised, that really brings out the kind of JPEG compression artifacts here and it just doesn't look as good. So when we're working with color, we wanna make sure our image is smooth. And by smooth, I mean you rid it of any compression artifacts. Something like noise is actually fine and I'm gonna add noise onto my image while I do this because that can also give us a more tasteful effect when we're working with colors. So I'm actually gonna do that right now. I'm gonna add noise. So let's make a new layer and let's do shift backspace on our keyboard. That will bring up this fill dialog. Choose the contents to be 50% gray and press OK. We're gonna go up to filter, camera raw filter and go to our effects panel here and just crank up this grain to whatever settings you like. Press OK. And then we could set this to either soft light or overlay. I'm gonna go for soft light just so the effect isn't too strong. And then I'll turn the opacity down on this a bit just so we're not overloading the image with noise. I'm also gonna put this in a group by pressing Command G and that way we can have all our adjustments and our noise in the same group. Next step we're gonna do is add a levels adjustment right on top of this noise. So go down to your adjustments, click on levels, and we're just gonna shift the mid-tones of this to the left so that we brighten the image a bit. So we brighten this up quite a bit here, but we don't want this to affect the highlights and even the mid-tones of the image. So we're gonna open up the blending options of this levels, and we're gonna go to this little blend if section down here. We want this layer to pretty much ignore the highlights of the underlying layer. So what we're gonna do is take the slider here for the underlying layer and drag the white end of this in towards the middle, closer to the black end of this. Keep an eye on how this affects your image. We're pretty much gonna wanna drag this until it reaches only the shadows of your image. Next up, we're gonna hold down Alt on our keyboard and click on this icon. That's gonna split it and allow us to blend this into the other tones in the image. So just drag these to the left and to the right to make a nice blend from one tone to the other. You're gonna to wanna to play with this a bit and just find the setting that works well with your image. Obviously this varies from image to image, so play around with this and see what works while keeping an eye on your image. So it should end up looking pretty much like this and what we've done is effectively brighten up only the shadows and slightly parts of the midtones in this image. And what that's doing is basically decreasing the contrast quite a bit and flattening our image. And that's gonna help us get that vintage color look. So this is looking good. I'm gonna press OK on this. And you notice that it kind of brightens up your image a lot. So to adjust for that, we're gonna add a, another levels adjustment. And we're gonna bring this one under the levels that we just made so as to kind of pre-darken the image. And then we're just gonna drag this mid-tone slider to the right to darken up our image. 
cool so looking at the before and after we can see that we pretty much just flattened the whole image a bit and brought a lot of light to those shadows cool so next up we're going to create a curves adjustment on top of both these adjustment layers and we're going to take this black point here and just drag it up a little bit and that's going to increase the black point of our image so now the black blacks are no longer pure black they're a dark gray and then we're going to take a point in the middle of this line here somewhere around here maybe and just drag that to the right or a little inward so as to compensate for the brightness we just gained so just play with this a little bit and find a spot that looks nice it's looking good to me here is the before and after you can see that we pretty much just decreased the contrast even more on this and also brought down the luminosity a bit on our highlights now i want to bring some more detail back into those shadows so what i'll do is add a selective color adjustment put that on top of all of our adjustments and i'll go to the blacks option then i'll just drag this black slider up until we get that detail back in our image i'm also going to go to the neutral option of this adjustment and bring the black to the left to blow out some of those mid-tones a bit cool so we're almost done here one of the last effects i want to add to this is a black and white adjustment layer so let me go ahead and add that and we're going to leave these settings as is but we're going to go into the blending options of this black and white and pretty much do the same thing we just did we're going to cut out most of if not all of these highlights over here so drag this slider pretty much all the way to the left and leave it so that only the really dark darks of this image are being affected by the adjustment layer and of course you can all click this and make this blend a little bit smoother keep in mind that the noise we added earlier is also helping us blend these colors into each other so if i were to go and turn off the noise you can see what a difference that makes if i really zoom in and then turn it on again so definitely don't skip the smoothing out your image step and adding noise but anyway back to our black and white adjustment layer in the blending options we want to make sure this layer ignores pretty much all of the highlights and most of the mid-tones of our underlying layers that is why we dragged this slider all the way to the left. And as you can see, we now have effectively desaturated all of the blacker shadows on our image. And that just helps a little bit to really dial in that vintage look. Definitely play with that. It's going to vary from image to image. This is looking good so far. Lastly, I think we could just tack on some extra color adjustments using a color balance adjustment layer. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. At this point of the process, this is completely up to you. We're now just sort of altering the colors to finish off our image here. So I'm going to make this a bit warmer for a more vintage or Y2K feel. And that's going to entail me dragging the yellow sliders more to the yellow, possibly the red a little bit. And I'll also go into the shadows and add some green in there, which is kind of going to give it a tiny bit of a film look. Perfect. So here's the before and after of that color balance layer. You can see this is a pretty nice difference and it just helps to finalize the image and sell that vintage look. And that's pretty much it, I would say. There's only one thing left to do, really, and that is to slap on a scan or paper texture. You really can't go wrong with a nice scan texture on top of your image. So I'm just going to go ahead, add this, offset it to screen, and I'm going to mess with the contrast a bit. Cool. Now this is a vintage photo this is straight from a 90s magazine let's take a look at the full before and after so this is before and this is after let me go a little bit more into the details here so especially in her pants this is a really nice effect we kind of desaturated those shadows and then added our own color to them and on her skin we kind of balanced out all the tones and made it sort of flat and that gives us a nice vintage feel overall this looks pretty great if we were to add some vintage looking type to this i mean come on now pretty damn cool i really love this effect it has so many applications and i just can't wait to see what you guys make with it that's about it for this video i really hope you learned something don't forget to like and subscribe like i said i post content like this every week to help you become a better designer as always thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace